You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Thanks for tuning in. This is Bill Powers with Mining Stock Education. And for the first time in over two years, I'm at an in-person conference. Get to see my friend David Erfley of JuniorMinerJunkie.com again. We're here at the Planet Microcap showcase uh, conference in Las Vegas. We're in between sessions. I wanted to get Dave's thoughts on the junior miners, what's going on with gold. Uh, Dave, thanks for joining me in person. Absolutely. Always great to talk to you and your audience. And I'd like to get your thoughts on gold. I'm a little confused. I listen to a lot of smart people, smarter than me, like you, and I thought gold was supposed to go up with the rate hikes. <laughs> now I'm being told gold's going to go up once the rate hike cycle stops. Uh, bring clarity to me. What do you think's going on here? Oh, yeah. Well, what's going on here is, is um, well, we have a combination of, of, of things. We have the dollar racing higher up to 20-year highs. We have 10-year yield at 3% here. And it's, it's funny that once the, 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 once the war premium was coming into the gold price, gold and the dollar were going up together. But um, once the Fed started getting uber hawkish and people started to get uber scared about the, the Fed creating a, rec- a recession by raising rates so much with uh, the economy looking shaky, um, once, the, once the U.S. dollar got over that magical $100 level on the DXY, it started to decouple and uh, gold started to go down. We had uh, the gold price test $2,000 an ounce twice here uh, since uh, the war began in, in Ukraine. And um, we had sharp reversals both, both times that took place. It's still not ready to clear that magic $2,000 level. And that is a very magical level. I mean, it's been very strong resistance for over a decade. Um, we've had daily closes above it. We've had weekly closes above it, but we have yet to see a monthly close above $2,000 an ounce. And until the gold price gets above that, gets above that $2,000, uh, an ounce level and cre- starts to create a floor as opposed to a very strong ceiling, we're going to continue to have pressure in, in the gold market and especially in the junior sector. So is it gold is the risk asset like we've seen over the last year? Is that how people are viewing it? Like, help me understand a little more on that. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I mean, uh, real rates are, are, are climbing now, you know, and then the, the cost of holding gold is, is, is expensive. So, I mean, they'd rather hold a, a T-bond, you know, giving them a rate of return than hold gold that owns nothing. Um, we've also had a, a combination of a few things happening in the, in the, gold, in the gold market. You know, you've, you've had 25 million people in Shanghai come off the market because they're locked down in their, in, in their, in their homes. And um, uh, Beijing is also starting to lock down. So, you know, the, the, the Chinese market is a, is a huge physical buyer's market, and um, that's, that's come offline. Um, you know, the Indian market uh, has come off, come off a bit because Indians don't buy gold when it's going up. They buy gold when it's going down. Um, so um, as far as the, the, the price is concerned, though, um, it's coming down to an area that, that's very interesting. Um, we had 1850 be tested here this morning before the, before the, uh, the Federal Reserve Reserve comes out and gives us their gives us their brilliance on what they're going to do in the economy. It's funny, you know, the dollar's gone sky high, these treasuries have gone sky high, and all they've done is is start a rate cycle. They've only raised 25 basis points. You know, he's come out and, and Powell's come out and, and put a 50 point basis hike on the table. That's that's a pretty much a given that's going to happen tomorrow. But uh, the, the the market is concerned that he's going to put a 75 basis point hike on the table for the next meeting. And uh, nobody's factored in the ramifications of these interest rates going so much higher. You know, uh, the the huge debt that that the United States has has amassed now is over 30 trillion. If that rate gets up to 2% and the market's already pricing in that that, that the rate's going to be at least 2.75% by Christmas. If it gets to 2%, just the interest alone on that debt is going to be a trillion dollars. So, um, and you've also got you, the, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, Q1 GDP came out last week, and they were expecting a 1% in, uh, 1% increase in, in gross domestic product. We got a negative 1.4%. So uh, the definition, uh, the technical definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of gross of, of, of GDP at a negative rate. We're all 
we're halfway there. Um, so we're seeing stagflation coming into the economy. When's the last time we had stagflation? It was in the 70s. Right when Paul Volcker was was raising rates from 4.75 percent to 20 percent, and the gold price was going right along, was going right alongside uh, interest rate hikes was going higher. So that's not happening this time because the Fed is raising is is starting to raise rates in a weak economy. So what's the paradigm to look for? Like, what's the historical precedent? Have you found one for what we're experiencing? <laughs> Well, the stagflation is a, is a historical price. You see, the gold price, everybody is has been frustrated, myself included, and the gold price not going up with inflation. Well, the gold the gold prices gold prices move ahead of events. You know, the gold price doubled from two thousand late two thousand fifteen to twenty twenty, um, and it, it started to 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 rise. Uh, it started to rise parabolically once the Fed had to come out and. QE over everything because of what was happening with the pandemic, create all this stimulus, right? And, and balloon their balance sheet to nearly $9 trillion. Well, the gold price got ahead of that and ran up ahead of itself up to $2,000. And it's been consolidating that move for two years now. Well, um, so a lot of people are frustrated that it's not going up with inflation. Well, um, it, 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 gold price usually lags inflation anyway. It did that in the 70s also. And once the stagflation really started to come into to, to the economy, that's when gold really took off. So um, I think it's, it, it's, it's diddling around here. You know, it's, it's already priced in th- that the Fed is going to be raising Two to two point seven five percent. I don't. I, I don't see how they're going to get there. I think they're going to. They're, they're going to be backtracking on that before it even gets close to that that level. But that, of course, remains to be seen, because they'll just kill the economy. So, um, it's really going to be interesting. Um, of course, what he says again. You know, at, at these, it's funny how each one of these these um, Federal Reserve meeting speeches and subsequent press releases becomes so important. It's like each. Each one becomes even more important than the last, which was the ultimate important, you know, Fed rate hike decision. So, you know, I basically um, I, I don't see him surprising the market. I basically see him, you know, doing what he said he was going to do. And since that's already priced in, you're probably going to see a, a, a buy the news event on in pretty much everything, you know, because we've had margin calls come in to the marketplace here. And every, everybody's you know, been selling everything and getting into the dollar. I heard you on uh, my friend Kerry Lutz's podcast, and one of the takeaways was margin clerks are more powerful than central bankers in regards to stocks. So uh, these macro situations we're talking about with gold and everything, Federal Reserve interest rates, how is this affecting how you're uh, positioning your junior minor portfolio? Yeah, it's it's really affecting me. Um, you know, um, I've been I've been staying away from higher risk drill plays that that have yet to define a resource for the past. Uh, for the past five or six months, if, if I if I do invest in a company like that, it's going to be a, via a private placement to where I get a a, a, a half warrant and preferably a full warrant um, to limit my risk on something like that. You know, but but the company, you know, it's got to be a, a really a really solid quality company for me to do that. You know, I've really cut down my private placements. That's another story of, of why I've done that. I think we've talked about it in the past and how expensive it is now for U.S investors and how many hoops we have to jump through just to sell the shares and, and we have to wait longer to sell them than Canadians and yada, yada, yada. But um, basically um, what's happening is, you know, when you get these margin calls in the marketplace, you know, uh, these juniors that, that, that I invest in and that are that make up a lot of my portfolio, um, they have no cash flow and they just consume capital. So no matter how no matter how bullish the underlying fundamentals of the project that they're de-risking is, investors are going to sell now and ask questions later because what's been happening, especially for the past year or so, is the gold price has been consolidating in that $1,800 to $2,000 range while inflation has gone much higher. And this inflation cost creep on, on their, in, in their CapEx on all these projects continues to go higher while the gold price continues to go sideways. So that is, 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 is giving opportunity for people with cash and a lot of patience. And it's giving also opportunity for, for people that have, that are, that are uh, down on the investment to sell early for tax loss. So, 
Um, it's it's always uh, a very interesting uh, sector to to not only trade but to 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 basically speculate in on when is when is that moment going to happen where the where the where the, the 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 switch goes on and everybody starts to get into this sector and as soon as we it gets close to that look, looking like it's going to happen. It reverses. I mean, that reversal we had a couple weeks ago was very strong. I mean, um, in five days, the GDXJ wiped out eight weeks of gains. That is that is a very strong reversal. And um, all of a sudden, the ju- the, uh, the 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 juniors and the miners, which and silver, which were leading the gold price, all of a sudden they weren't. And, and and I mean all of a sudden by where they were where strong obvious obvious weakness came in to the to the miners and silver and especially the juniors in relation to the gold price and that was a flashing a warning that the gold price was going to get hit and sure enough the week the week after the gold price got hit and it's still getting hit and I think there's a there's a good chance that if if the gold market doesn't like what the Fed has to say tomorrow that the gold price can get down to eight eighteen thirty five is a there's a lot of uh, interesting support there. There's 50-week moving average support, there's 100-week moving average support, and there's 200-day moving average support. And if it gets down there, the entire war premium would be gone. So I think there's a good chance of that happening. The way the, the, the miners continue to lag, what you're seeing in the, in, in the miners, you're seeing in the GDX and the GDXJ is when you do get bounces, you see buying come into their downtrend lines. And as soon as their downtrend lines are hit, the selling comes back in again. And you're seeing that a lot in many of of the junior companies as well, the quality ones as well as the bad ones. So everything's being being uh, hit pretty hard right now. So it's yeah, we're just going to have to see how everything plays out. You know, I recommended to my subscribers a couple of weeks ago to, you know, build up some cash, you know, hold your core positions and have an ample amount of cash to to basically reassess and see what happens, see how the market um, reacts to what the Fed has to say tomorrow. Dave, you shared something with me in a previous conversation today about how the executives of mining companies are, their greatest concern is ESG. Could you elaborate a little more on that? And what are some takeaways for us as investors? Oh, yeah. I mean, an article, I think a report came out uh, either this week or last that uh, was kind of startling to see that... um, that management of these companies are now the, their most concern is environmental and social governance, which which was interesting because you would think it would be uh, capex cost creep, which is now their number two concern. Because um, I think a lot of them feel that hey, inflation's probably peaked out here, and for for a little while, and I'm I, I'm I'm in that camp as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. How good a jurisdiction you're in, you know, if you fail on your ESG in 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 your in in your due diligence, you know, it's going to cost you down the road. I mean, it just happened to Belo Sun Mining in the Amazon in, in Brazil. You know, um, they they did not um, they did not uh, speak with a with, with a local tribe. They, they you know they they didn't um, do their due diligence with a local tribe and talk to them about hey, what do you think about this project in your community? And um, it got it, it got a permit yanked. So um, you, you really have to you really have to uh, be on top of 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 communities. You know, you could be in a top tier jurisdiction, but if that if a community in that jurisdiction doesn't want the project. It's you know then you, sh- you should stay away from it and um, it's yeah it's it's just just a, another concern that we have to we have to deal with as junior resource stock speculators. What about Mexico as a jurisdiction? We saw First Majestic Silver for all those years, one metal, one country, silver out of Mexico. They expanded into Nevada, and we'll see where else they go. But uh, Mexico seems to be trending in an unfavorable way towards the extractive industries. Um, How do you feel about this jurisdiction? Well, it depends on what state you're in. You know, um, you know, Sonora State's pretty good, you know, but Guerrero Gold Belt is definitely not. Um, you, 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 I mean, and there's, I think it's, uh, I forget the name of the company. They have the Extaca project. Um, and, um, you know, that's a very good project. And um, the, the, the jurisdiction that they're in is good, but the community doesn't want it. So it's, it's, it's being blocked. And the, the stock has suffered continually because of that. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, uh, some you know, the, the tax situation, you know, is is a big one. You know, but a, but a lot of these, you know, Central American and South American countries, you know, they're, they they see all these, they see the 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 prices of these resources going higher, and they want their fair share. You know, they want more. They want more of of the action, which which is understandable. It's their country, so um, you just you, you just have to be make sure that when you talk into these management teams, you know, that you make sure that they have a really good relationship with not only the government but the 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 local population, and that is that is key. That is so key in in all these projects. Very good advice. Uh, as a sentiment gauger, you limit your subscribers to 500. How many are we at right now? <laughs> um, at last I checked, it's around 380. I think it's it's you know some of some of them have some of them have canceled and their and their subscription hasn't hasn't uh, come up for cancellation yet. You know it's it's quarterly, so they've said they've canceled, but um, I think about 380, 380, something like that. Okay, so what's the implication for the sector, if any? Well, you know, my subscribers are fantastic. Um, you know, um, I try to get out, get out ahead of these corrections beforehand and, and give them a heads up that, hey, I'm doing some risk management here because I think this is going to happen. And um, they really appreciate that. And um, all the, all, of course, all the, all the in-depth reports I do on the companies that, that, um, that I recommend. And before I purchase them, I do a, a full detailed report on the company and send it out to them. And also, I try to keep them up to date on what's going economically in the world that would affect the gold price and what happens and what each Fed head says. And I try to get into the into the nitty gritty details of, of the economy and pass that on to them with while at the same time not trying to overload them with too much information. So um, I think I must be doing a pretty good job of that because I haven't really gotten a lot of cancellations recently because of what, what's happened here. So um, yeah, and like I said, my subscribers are great. You know. Um, they always ask intelligent questions, and they never beat me over the head for something that happens in the sector like it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, thanks for joining me. Great to see you in person, and I'll be chatting again with you next month. Great to see you too, Bill. Thanks a lot. Thanks.